welcome, welcome, welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura, Tom Segura, and Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to your mom's house. All right, here we are. Here we fart. Here we go. Here's the thing. You left that the other way. Any more, just do it like we always do it. That wasn't so much to ask. Anything else? Can you get your sandwich or something? No, you could just do the minimum. Oh my God. I did everything else. I put in all of the things. I did the lighting. Okay. Don't act like I don't do it all. You God. don't you don't do it all. I do lots. You don't do it all. Hello. You have anything you want to point out to our listeners? No. Why? What? What's the big deal? <laughs> well, you said you What's happening? There's nothing going on. You said you got some messages. I said that I read the comments on our YouTube channel and some people are saying that I look pregnant and you know, that's very rude, um, especially because those motherfuckers are right. <laughs> <laughs> Baby G. Number two. Number two. Thug is incubating right now, <laughs> as you call him. It's a boy. Yeah. It's a boy. It's a boy. Number two. <laughs> so, yeah, we're in second trimester, and I've had to hide it this whole time. And now you can just let it out, let your tits hang. Oh, my God. And they're so big. They're my really milkers big. are so big, and I everything's so big right now. You're trying to cover them up, but <laughs> it's pointless. I got lucky, though, because our... Yeah, yeah. Because our... Uh, the holidays is when I had my first trimester. I got pregnant in October, so I got to be kind of sick and on the down low mm -hmm. outside of all the cameras, which was nice. But then it I couldn't nice. hide it. The last two weeks, I've been wearing sweatshirts. You have seen the comments. I've seen them too. <laughs> What's up? She looked pregnant. I know. And with your second child, apparently you show way quicker, and I was showing like at five weeks. I yeah. felt fat as shit already, so... Well, so it's exciting. It's very exciting. Thug Here, number two. Thug number two. Two thugs in the house now. <laughs> what are we going to name this one? What are you thinking? Well, we fucked up on the last one because we were going to go with uh, Ruth's Chris, Tom's Ruth's Chris. Tom's Ruth's Chris. And then <laughs> no. Carl's Jr. Well, because I ate so much of it yeah. with Ellis, we should have named him Carl's Jr. Now this one, I'm I was also a fan of De La Tom. De La Tom. <laughs> I think that's a really good name for a... The son That's of a, a good one. But this baby, I've really been craving pizza, so I was thinking Domino's. Domino's. Or Domino. What about Thin Crust? Oh, because <laughs> that's what I'm, my jam right now is Thin Crust. Oh, right, Domino. Domino. Thin Crust, extra cheese, and the pepperoni's on there. But Domino sounds kind of like a cool name. Like, what's up, yeah. Domino? what's up, Domino? Yeah. Or Blanket. I like Blanket. I like Blanket. Blanket. Like, like Mike? Yeah, but nobody's named Domino. That would be really original. It's a great name. It's a great name. Um, but, yeah, Carl's Jr., we're going to go and, and have his name legally changed to Carl's Jr., and then this one we're going to do Domino. Domino. I like it. Well, uh, there's a lot to cover. Um, we'll talk about all this stuff and the naming of our second thug and more. Um, but let's get the show started, and let's keep it uh, fun. You know, I mean, people's <laughs> main concern, obviously, when... <laughs> When we had a kid last time, they're like, oh, is having a kid going to make you squares or yeah. make you no more fun? And well, Joey Diaz was very worried that uh, I might become a woman. Yeah, don't become a woman. Don't become a woman, he yeah, said. Good so, point. Good point. I hope you thing, never become a woman. Good thing that never happened. <laughs> As my wife, I hope you stay and not a woman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going right. to cut my hair off with this one, though. Here we go, Jane. Yeah. Let's get it started. Let's get yeah. the party started. Get that mom cut. Yes, me and Jade here. And I just want to share with all of you why I felt the need to share me placing menstrual blood all over my face <laughs> and what power it holds for us as women to fully own this part of I... self that we have been shaming for so many lifetimes. Uh -huh. This shit is big time! Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother uh... to this. <laughs> your mama in the fucking stand! Welcome, welcome, welcome to your mom's house. Period blood on the face. <laughs> Mr. Blood to own. Uh, that's, own. That's pretty raw, pretty nasty. Yeah. Um, people, by the way, thank you. A lot of people have messaged me that they watched 
my new special disgraceful on netflix over the weekend i've got i really received uh mm -hmm. between comments and emails and think thousands of messages so i thank you all for them uh much love no hate f all the haters <laughs> but uh it's been <laughs> much love no hate overwhelming yeah um people telling me that i'm nasty as hell i'm the nasty <laughs> champ <laughs> uh, what yeah no that's there's no way you're the nasty champ yeah Oh, hell no. Everybody know I'm nasty as fuck. No, 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 no. Everybody was telling me they're like, no. it's funny, you're nasty as hell. You're so gross, you nasty. No, and no, no. Yes. Listen, I've been the nasty supreme of this household. No way. Y'all huh, since You've even beginning. attacked me for being so nasty. You're like, you, what are you talking about? You tell me how nasty I am with my farts <laughs> and like how I'm just, I talk and think just disturbed, depraved yeah. things. Yes, and, all the time. Yeah. But that's in our home life. But on stage, I would say, that I'm the nastier one. Mm -mm. Hell yeah, I'm way nastier no, than you. Know, you're a woman, you know? You're... But that's why it makes uh, more of an impact. I'm even nastier. You might because... register as an impact, but I'm definitely, I wear the crown. You're the nasty champ? Mm -hmm. That's some bullshit right there. It's true. No, I'm the nasty champ. Everybody what did knows. I ask you in bed last night? <sighs> oh, you were like, have you ever heard of um, the, the scrum gob gobbler? <laughs> The chum smuggler? No. What I asked you was, do oh, you know that? do you know what a ball hog is? Yeah. Okay, so it's a sports term. Uh-huh. In in sports, if you play basketball or soccer and somebody won't pass the ball, yeah. they're a ball hog. Uh -huh. Like they're hogging the ball. Right. They're they're not sharing. They're not passing it around. They're keeping it all to themselves. So they're called <laughs> a ball hog. Uh-huh. And I found that term being exploited <laughs> by uh -oh. a different industry. Hi, I'm Sierra Sin, and I'm a ball hog. I love balls. <laughs> so stupid. How come that wasn't the opening clip? <laughs> How'd you pass that one up for menstrual blood lady? I wanted to save it for you. Ugh, she nasty. What I She's love, a nasty champ, not us. She's so nasty. <laughs> I love that they took, Ugh. I love when they take an innocent <laughs> sports term. Like, yeah. That's what like ball kids hog. say. <laughs> like you're a ball hog. Share the ball. <laughs> they turned it into a vile, <laughs> perverted slang. Right. This uh. is so, you know, this is so... Um, it's just such a, another silly porno yeah, thing. Like, yeah. there's no woman on the planet, really. Maybe there's like two fucking freak shows out there. They're like, I love balls. I gotta have them in my mouth. I'm a ball hog. This is such a fucking dumb fantasy. It's <laughs> such a not. That's why it's hilarious. Thing God. because no one really does that. Nobody. You know? Nobody's. <laughs> I love sucking on balls. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a whole series. Oh, it's yeah. It's a whole series. Let's hear it. Hi, I'm Peyton Lafferty, and I'm a ball Peyton, hog. Peyton Lafferty. Yeah. That sounds like a Peyton Manning. Peyton. So they have to, they have to like Peyton Lafferty. Say they have to say their name. They have to say that they're a ball hog, and then they have to just suck balls for like these whole things. Easy and, money, dude. It is easy. Money. There's no calm. And there's a lot of funny ball talk, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> oh, fuck. Get your nose up in those balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of vocal fry, balls, too. <laughs> balls are funny, though. They're uh, funny. The problem with balls, there's a there's a smell sometimes if they're not clean enough. But other than that, balls I are think pretty low maintenance. That's a fetish, too. Yeah, sniff those balls. <laughs> sniff them. Okay, now let me put it right up against your eye. Bat your eyelashes. Oh, God. <laughs> Bat your eyelids. Oh my god. Mm, rub this balls all over those chats. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. There's like five people on the planet that really have this. You think so? That are like, put your eyelashes against my balls. Yeah, it's not a lot. Are you into that? No. Not really. I mean I should. Try it out. You know? Try <laughs> Be fun. We gotta put this one aside for Dr. Drew, the yeah. ball worship. Try it out. Make it make a Drew list. True. Um this time you beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> oh the trauma. So much trauma. Oh, so, so much sad. trauma. I just I watch your show and I just get sad. <laughs> That's what Drew basically told us. This is the saddest <laughs> show. He's ever yeah. had a part of. 
Try it out. <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> Piss on me, beat me. Black guys. You think you could ever be this girl? <laughs> rub your balls all over that cum. Oh. On the cum? <laughs> yeah. He's got to rub his balls on the cum now? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, great. I don't give a shit. Here's the thing, mm. man. Anything that uh, doesn't involve cum on my face or getting an STD, like you, nothing can happen from putting balls in your mouth. How much would you do? Balls what would mouth? you need for, to deal. do that scene? Oh, uh, man. I mean. <sighs> What's the going rate for something like? I mean, not like not a ball as scene? not as me now. Yeah, you now. Oh, as like a stand-up comedian, mother of almost two children. Yeah. Oh, I have millions. Millions, but it's, like, it's going to ruin my life. What you know? about like? Uh, it's not possible. You know, now. twenty years ago, and you're you're short on rent. <sighs> and I I don't care if my life is in the toilet for the rest of it. The rest of it. Yeah, like there's okay. just a ball scene out. About you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say, yeah, like twenty years ago, I'm just who cares? I'm gonna ruin my life. Yeah. Let's just say I'm one of those girls. Like it's just it's never gonna happen for me. Yeah. I'd do a ball scene for like fifteen hundred dollars. Mm. That's not that's not bad. I think you're asking for a little much. I think they would probably <laughs> be like, get out of here. That's you're not you're yeah. not doing it. There's yeah, but no, I'm ruining my life for fifteen hundred. They don't care about that part. They're like, this is a ball scene. It's just balls. But here's what I would do. Being the entrepreneur that I am, yeah. I would I would open up my own website yeah. and, and I would be the ball girl. Oh. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. would I would make it and I'd do the eyelash on the balls and yeah. I'd put my feet on the balls. Like yeah. I'd be the ball queen is right. how I would do it. Right, right. You know, I'd make a business out of it. That's pretty good. And I'd charge guys to come over and then I'd smash their balls or whatever. Oh, they're now they're making house calls? That's extra money though. See, because I've already ruined my life. I'm the ball lady for the rest of it. So I try really got to, yeah, I got to try it out. You got to try it out. Try it out. Yeah. What would you do? Well, now that I want to be the entrepreneur, I, I, I think like go back 20 right? years and I go, uh, if I could go back in time and be like, I don't want the life that I have now. <laughs> yeah. I want to go down the CD path. Then <laughs> right. I would start my own site. Uh, right. Called like gargleymyballs.com. <laughs> right. And like, now you're thinking. And then I would be like in the camera like, hey, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Which one of you dumb yeah. hookers out there would suck on my balls? Nobody. And then, and then some girl would walk in and be like, uh, "Hi, I'm Peyton Lafferty, <laughs> and I'm a ball hog." And then I would be like, "Sniff my balls. Get your nose in there." Oh fuck! Get your nose up in those balls. <laughs> yeah. God damn. That's a different life path. Right. So I was saying, if you really want to throw it in the toilet, but you got to think in terms of branding and long term. I think it's a good brand to get into. I think so. It's a niche market. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people who would be like, it's a pretty interesting lane you're in. <laughs> Maybe there's some awards. I don't know. It's not that bad. But the farting, that's not bad either. The fart videos, easy money. Yeah. Really, of all the genres, um, <laughs> the fart video is the easiest. You think so? Yeah. I just got to eat food. Yeah, fucking, dude, I fart all day every day. That's right. You dude, do. imagine being pregnant. I do the pregnant fart lady stuff. Yeah. Even better money. Yeah. That's when I really jack up the prices. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a lot of fun. No. Yeah. Seems like we have a fun new lane to explore <laughs> with the balls. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Try it out. Try it out. Yeah. Try it out. You gotta have fun. You gotta try you stuff gotta out. You gotta try to first fun yeah. stuff out. So back to period blood on your face. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what about this video? Would you ever make that video? Which video would you yeah. make? Yes. Um, which one is more harmful to you, you think? Oh, fuck. I mean... It's you, you're 20. Is it <laughs> menstrual blood on the... Because I think that one would tell people... <laughs> see, it's different signals you're sending. Yeah, exactly. One of them yes, is yes. like... Yeah. I mean, we haven't even seen this yet, but she says I, I smear <laughs> period blood on my face. Um, I think that would tell people you're mentally ill. Yeah. And then the ball <laughs> one might just be like, oh, she's she needed money, she's desperate, she's sad. <laughs> well, it's the would you rather. It's the where do you place the shame. It's the original would you rather. Would you rather masturbate in front of your family? Or have or them have, masturbate on you. Right. So it's, am I going to assume responsibility and be mentally ill? Or... <laughs> I can't believe I'm thinking this, but I think I'd rather there's a ball video of you exist than period blood. Because period blood on your face, I'd be like... <laughs> Yeah, you can't really explain that you, you, one. You can't explain it, and there's no going back. Let's hear her explain it. <laughs> through reclaiming the blood and through reclaiming our menstrual cycle, yeah. it fully allowed me to embody like <laughs> everything that I was. It fully allowed me to have the freedom to be able to express who I was in every way. And this, you know, this thing about, oh, oh hey. hey. Oh, Paul shit. Gilmartin's here. This is not how this is supposed to go. <laughs> All right, let's stop. Bye. All right. So uh, we resettled. Um, 
And you want to introduce our guest? That is yes, no with here. us is the fantastic Paul Gilmartin from the uh, Mental Illness Happy Hour. Cloud for Paul. I mean, that's not how we do this. How do you so, do it? <laughs> just, Awkward silence. You that's usually who it is. And then, and then uh, you guys have done each other's podcasts. Well, yeah, yeah, he's been a guest on That's Deep Bro. I've been a guest on his show, and I thought, why not have him on your mom's house? Of this course. is a perfect fit. D- it, don't you know? I invited myself. No, that's no. not true. Yes, yes. Oh I said, God, you know, Paul. if you if you ever need a guest, I'd love to do your podcast. So <laughs> no, I'm happy you're again, here. I learned my lesson spending last year alone on Christmas Eve, Christmas, and my birthday. <laughs> yeah. You know what? To be stubborn. Speak up. Yeah. yeah. When you have needs, speak up. I there think I've go. been stubborn about that shit more times than I'd like to admit in my life. About like, nope, I'll just stay here, and and I'll. Just show everybody by staying here That's and right. not saying what I want. Right. Yeah. Then I can't be rejected. Yeah. And I get to know mm. my video game. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I'll find a new porn clip. There. Hey, uh, speaking of which, I'll yeah. get a nap in. Segue. We have a. We were just playing this porn clip called Ball Hogs. Um, not it's not a, familiar with it. Um, well, there's a, oh. a line oh. of. Uh, I mean, you're familiar with the term ball hog. In terms of in oh, sports, yes, like yes. somebody who won't pass the ball, right? So there's a, a series, an adult series called Ball Hogs, and it sounds like this. Um, Hi, I'm Sierra Sin, and I'm a ball hog. Mm. <laughs> well, they just really like balls. Um, Here's something you'll never hear about pornography: somebody watching it. I wish the sound was more graphic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. More detail. More, s- more smacking and drooling. <laughs> That's a lot. That's oh, how it isn't. Get mm. your nose up in those balls. So we were talking about the ball clip, and yeah. then we switched to this woman who is, um, she was explaining how she's trying to, what is it, like recapture her femininity Well, there's this whole thing about shame uh, in, uh, uh, when it comes to women's menstrual cycles. And so some women like to reclaim uh, their menstrual cycle, and, and, and that's what she's doing. Yeah. 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 Through Do it pri- reclaiming the blood Do it and privately. through reclaiming our menstrual cycle, it fully allowed me to embody like everything that I was. It fully allowed me to have the freedom to be able to express who I was in every way. I got to say, one of the things I'm happy about, mm-hmm. the, what she did and what she's talking about is fucking gross. Mm-hmm. But it's nice that she's attractive. It like, helps. If it was like somebody gross doing it, I'd be like, this is really You know gross. what? That's that's a really shallow thing to say, but it's actually really true. Yeah. That if she weren't hot, we would all be more like, like Ugh. We would not watch all the clips. No. We would stop and be like, she's really gross. Doing yeah. I, I've only seen five seconds of this clip, but the first thing that comes <laughs> to my mind is... She's desperate for auditions. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, you think she's one to go in? You think she wants to be a ball hog or like a real actress? First of all, the boobs don't look natural. No. 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 She's extremely made up for it. Yep. So it's like if you're going to do the whole menstrual blood thing, why not not wear makeup? You know, why not be completely right. stripped down, completely as you, I'm not saying be naked, but be as you are completely. Right. Like your vagina nat- is. Naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to That's go, an interesting go for the point. Full, the full effect. That is a very interesting point. Yeah. That she's doing like this, I'm connected to yeah, who mo- I am. Mother Earth. But she and couldn't be more done up. Yeah, That's and it really... looks like fake boobs. I could be wrong. Well, guys, I mean, hey, wait a minute. I, I, isn't that why she needs to reclaim her natural essence? Maybe she is so Again. disconnected because of the fake boobery and all this you stuff. You know, this is like a whole other but, level I didn't think we were going to get to. Judging her process. Yeah. Come on. Come yeah. on. By putting this up on social media, I really found it just it kind of gave an invitation to people to be able to know that it's okay to share this part of yourself no, it's and not. that mm, it's not but it's not taboo <laughs> it's not the message at all but there are some things you shouldn't share with social media one of them would be rubbing <laughs> menstrual blood on your face you know i'm a little shamed of the noises i make when i shit but <laughs> I don't know if I want to try to ease the public into uh, <laughs> accepting that part of my being. <laughs> well, maybe, but maybe what she's talking about here is you taking that leap and yeah. knowing that, you know what, you should be okay. And how about you posting one of those videos of you taking a grunty shit yeah. and, and, and kind of knowing that it's okay, Paul, you're a person. I love the word grunty. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why this insistence that everybody be comfortable with everything publicly yeah. now? How about I, I don't some shame? Know. Some shame is good. A little bit of shame in your game, yeah. just a little. Yeah, uh, is fine. 
I think a lot of us feel invisible in our lives, like Uh something's missing, like there's something special about us that isn't being recognized, and we just need to find what that is, and then the emptiness will be filled. Yeah. (laughs) So her specialness is her period, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, and probably because nobody else has done that, so it's like, oh, like the episode I was listening to where you guys were talking about possum, possum guy and purple lady. <laughs> oh yeah, purple what lady cool and Michael's arts and crafts, like the people that find their identity through like uh, liking a yeah. weird thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah There's yeah. a lady at the coffee shop I go to who <laughs> is hat lady, and her hats, like, <laughs> like if it was this, if if I it was the set of a James Cameron movie, her hat, you would go. Ah, they put a little too much effort into it. It's, <laughs> it's the most much. ornate, crazy. It's a nativity scene on on a person's <laughs> head, and each one's different. And God bless her, you know, if that makes her happy to do that. But I think it has the opposite effect when people look at it. They go, "Oh, she's so lonely." Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly it. I mean, I guess right she before wants... you got here, we were having the discussion. If if she had to choose between being one of the ball hog girls <laughs> right. or the <laughs> menstrual <laughs> blood lady, who would you rather be? And I think uh, it's like it's uh, do you wanna own being like crazy kind of crazy? <laughs> or if you're the ball hog, you can be like, Well, they kinda did it to me. You know what I mean? Like it's I'm, I've been and it was a money thing. Maybe I did this for, for a living when I was Because 20. I actually think that like the ball hog one, you'd be like, you kind of have some empathy, like she's probably in a bad place and she needed some money. Okay. Um like but I think it's almost better to be a ball hog than crazy hat lady, you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, at least someone's jerking off to you. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's jerking off to hat lady. No, not well, at one all. guy in Germany. Yeah, yeah. one yeah. guy yeah. always. To, yeah. 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 You know, it's been really hard to face off with all of the negative comments yeah. on me you, doing this you because know they were coming you ritual knew they and were i'm coming. not asking anyone else to do this i'm just saying this has been my experience and it's been uh-huh. really empowering and it's felt really good to connect with that part of stuff. i gotta tell you your you and your sisterhood have yeah. really really challenged the definition of empowering well i've always thought that uh, th- uh, yes that ha- first of all pornography is empowering being a stripper is empowering rubbing f- uh, menstrual blood on our faces is empowering you know what though what it boils down to is uh, same strokes for everybody yep there you go <laughs> everybody likes the same thing that's what it's all different about. different strokes for for her it's empowering for me I, i'm indifferent I, I don't have any negativity towards menstrual blood. I don't have any preference. Do you think 20 years from now she's going to look at this clip and ro- <laughs> roll her eyes or be like, yeah, that, I'm glad I did that? I mean, any healthy person rolls their eyes at what they did 20 years ago. I right? hope so. Right. Anybody yeah. who's making progress. <laughs> yeah. 20 years is, yeah. Oh, that's a lifetime. That's a long time. Well, let's see it. Are we going to see All her right. face? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. You know, Paul. Now that you said the actress thing, I feel like this was kind of an actory. I don't think there's any doubt. Yeah, I don't think there's do think, any doubt. Do you that think there's she's any... a frustrated actress? Yeah, yeah I think you're right. You think, think there's any right. part that's like fucking James Cameron will see this? And yes. Like, oh, oh yeah. That's like you get like lost in the delusion of. <laughs> oh, it. I I I experienced that. I went yeah. in on, on an audition one time. It was for a, <laughs> for a Steven Soderbergh movie. And you it was, jerked oh off all God. over your own face. <laughs> Yeah. I had the decency to do it in the parking uh-huh. garage. Go to the roof parking where nobody is. And uh, I went on, uh, and, uh, and I r- never get auditions. And it's like, all of a sudden, it's a Steven Soderbergh movie I'm auditioning for. So I'm yeah, super huge. excited. And uh, I do this uh, Republican character uh, sometimes for, for comedy. And I thought, oh, this guy's perfect for this audition. This this part is perfect for this, this guy. And, and I'm like... There's nobody more perfect for this part. I'm going to get this. Yeah. And it's Steven Soderbergh. It's probably going to be an award-winning movie. That part's going to be, but I'm probably going to get an award for this. <laughs> and then I'm yes. tripping, imagining my, not only me giving an award speech, yeah. but me arguing with people the next day who I forgot <laughs> to include in my speech while I'm waiting to go in on the fucking audition. And I go in and I'm horrible. Oh, I horrible. So I don't even get a call back. I feel so good hearing oh, God, you say that Paul, yeah. to it. know that I'm not alone because yeah. I've had like, 
I've had those same fantasies and like have thought about like would I wear a tux or would I wear like a suit <laughs> to the Emmys? Yeah, totally. You know, and like and take myself through the whole thing. Absolutely. And then you like then you get the call like that actually they they didn't even say anything about your audition. They didn't even acknowledge that you auditioned. <laughs> yeah. We tried to find out, and they don't remember who you are. And I'm like, oh. And just so you know, that moment you had, for those of you who've never heard of Paul Gilmartin or the Mental Illness Happy Hour, that's basically like what your show is, is having these moments of being painfully honest. And Yes. And I should have mentioned, sorry, earlier, uh, you're also a stand-up comedian. You've been on television a million things. The, was it dinner and a movie? That was the thing that mo- probably most people know me from. Yes. And Comedy Central, Half Hour, and stuff like that. But yeah. I don't do uh, and stand-up too, anymore. Right? Um, yes. When I'm not uh, doing anything, I'm at the Christian Science Reading Room. <laughs> okay. and, I, and oddly enough, I read through a monocle. Is I that right? I why. Wow. I think I want to class it up. Yeah. 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 Old school. I like so that. So what, you don't do stand-up anymore? I don't. I just do this uh, satirical Republican character sometimes. But as far as going to clubs and doing that, no, I, about five years ago, I just kind of hit a wall and went. I have an agreement with the entertainment industry. Uh, they won't show an interest in me and I won't show an interest in them. Yeah. And we've both kept our end of the bargain. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you get to perform the character, the Republican character, um, like on sta- uh, live yeah. stages? Yeah. And, okay. Yeah, I go on uh, uh, Corolla's podcast. Oh, great. I uh, do it on Jimmy Dore's. Uh, Jimmy Dore does live shows. Um, so I do it there. There's some YouTube clips. I put a fake campaign ad out about, I don't know, 10 years ago as, oh, as this funny. guy. But it's really fun to do because it's kind of like my, my picket sign of when I get pissed off about shit. Oh, yeah. People that are hypocrites. So I just pour it all into this kind of clueless character that's who's, fun who's a hypocrite yeah this must be i mean you must be really like searching for material these days uh like, where to go. <laughs> oh it's not god. really a lot to talk about oh my god it's yeah. it's it can it, be overwhelming i guess it, right it's funny because when i started doing the character it was almost cartoony yeah and now it reality has caught up oh to it god. yeah and so it's really just rearranging the reality into a punchline right because i guess yeah. you could see the character now and be like yeah i believe that yeah guy. yeah yeah. Where, where's he representative? Actually, a lot of times <laughs> yeah. when I do it, people don't know it's not a real character. Do you get people get angry at you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because his, his views are like, you know, one of the things he says is, is uh, Mexicans make two things, tortillas and trouble. Oh, that's <laughs> you know? fantastic. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. You know, my favorite thing about like those guys in real life is, and like that's why that line works so well, is like, uh, fifth grade level vocabulary, which they did uh-huh. this thing during like the the uh, the campaigns, like leading up to the election, and they actually found that like uh, they studied all these interviews and speeches that Trump did, and found that he had like he stayed in like a third to fifth grade level vocabulary, Easily. and that actually that that had a huge impact. He's one of us. He he would say things like things are bad, things are ter- sad, awful. This is just terrible. And it never would leave that range of kind of simplistic language. Yeah. I thought it was really fascinating mm. language yeah. study. Even though he said, I have the best words. I have the best words. And I'm like, <laughs> really words. smart. Like, really like, smart. Really yeah. smart. I'm like, genius, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Um, <sighs> you were terrifying. asking me last week how, um, <sighs> how people in Star Wars yeah. communicate with like the monsters, you know, like the Wookiees. Yes, yeah, the... so if you watch the Star Wars films, you'll notice that Chewbacca and uh, R- R2-D2, it's always, meow, 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 meow. and then the actor's like, what's that, R2? You want dinner? Yeah. He's like, meow, 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 meow. Yeah. oh, you want a hot dog? Apparently this guy has like a, like can mm. teach you. Hello everybody, <laughs> and yeah. welcome to Voices with Matthew. Oh, By Jesus. popular request, Many people have asked me to do my Chewbacca or my Wookiee impersonation. And by well, that, I, I mean my mother. <laughs> to find the Wookiee language and found out it's actually three languages. No, it's not. It's not just a bunch of sounds. And there you blah, go. Blah, 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 whatever. And it's not. Like it I said, not. I went back to Wikipedia, found the language, or one of the languages I'm going to use, which is called... It's uh, the called the common language of the Wookiee people. It's actually for trade and travel. It's the one that most oh. non-Wookiees would have used in the stories. This is one of the most disturbing levels of <laughs> fandom. 
<laughs> is when they start going like, this is real. You know, this is how these people in this yeah. world, you're like, that's a made up world, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. like not like he's like, well, more of the, some of the natives prefer to address it this way. You're like, it's all made up, man. What are you talking about? It's the Wikipedia, Tom. Yeah, Wikipedia. Unbelievable. So, uh, with for, uh, without further ado, uh, with a, here we go. <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> Goodbye. I am well, thank you. He's not just making sense. I am a friend. Uh, so he... I, I don't know. Uh, I love that somebody gets so into something. It's yeah. just so hard to take it seriously when it's so niche. Because yeah. I think all of us, maybe I should just include myself, find something I like and get, uh, we were kind of talking about this before we start recording, yeah. get ridiculously into it. Like when yeah, I discovered- yeah, yeah. you get obsessed? Oh, when I when I uh, discovered good wine for the first time, I mean, I've been a drinker all along. I'm sober now, but I've been a drinker all along. But I'd always thought, oh, wine, you know, that's for pussies. It, you yeah. know, what's the big deal? And I was buying uh, a, a friend of mine a bottle of wine because he loved wine. And I said to the to the clerk, you know, what if I give you fifty bucks for like a bottle of wine that you think is awesome? Uh, I'd I'd like to try that. And so I took it home, and it blew my fucking mind. Really? And within three months, I had 24 cases of vintage <laughs> wine in a rented, yeah, totally. humidity-controlled storage totally. locker. Whoa. And was searching for wine every day on the internet. You got obsessed. Dude. I yeah. thought you were about to say I was 25 grand in debt. <laughs> that too. <laughs> that too. Hey, sorry yeah. to interrupt, but can I move this? Because I can tell that it's blocking my face. This, yeah, what do you want to move? Thing? Oh, What's that? The arm. Oh. Uh, yeah, What's but that? now can you be, is he cool? Yeah. Yeah, okay, just yeah. for editing, because yeah. I can see him. Oh, yeah. Perfect, okay. okay. And, it, and it's that way with everything that, that I get into. It's, <laughs> I run the wheels off it. When I did, uh, got into photography, uh, taking pictures of dogs. I think you mean photography, but go ahead. Photography. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially if it's pictures of dogs, it's photography. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Within the... <laughs> Within the first year of having that camera, I took so many pictures, the counter rolled over. Oh, my God. Which means over 10,000 pictures. Oh, my God. So I, you have a real obsessive... Totally. Totally obsessive. Yeah. I've never uh, I've never done anything what in is moderation. That? Yeah. Is that, um, is that alcoholism? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It presents I, itself in many forms. I've heard Dr. Oh, Drew right. go, adrenaline junkies. Oh, you mean alcoholics. Like, it's a similar... Yeah, it's all... It doesn't really matter what the substance yeah. is. It's the <laughs> trying to distract yourself from the discomfort of being in your skin. Feet yeah. Things, yeah. So how long... Wait, how long have you been sober? Uh, 14 years. So that's a long time. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, is there so, Was there something that you took to immediately after, like, your sobriety began? In other words, like, some people... As soon as they go sober, they're like, I really got to get into this. Woodworking. <laughs> Within six months, oh I had a full-on cabinet shop in my... <laughs> now, that paid dividends because I know how to make furniture. That's awesome. Did you fucking really? Oh, yeah. I could show you, you pictures of it. I make mid-century modern Oh, my uh, gosh. Furniture. Yeah. So uh, and I still do that, but I'm not obsessive about it. But it was to the point where I would be at dinner with my wife, now my ex-wife, and she would be saying something to me and I would be half listening and the other half of me would be saying, oh, what kind of joint should I do? A dovetail joint on that thing? Or oh, right. what kind of wood should I use? And I know now looking back, because I'm not as obsessive about things, that it was a way of me distracting myself from shit I'd buried mm -hmm. as a as a kid. But mm -hmm. right. um, it everything. Do you have a current day kind of upset or mini upset? Not really. Oh, so not really, yeah, which is good. nice. Yeah, that's nice. That's really, myself, I guess that's my current day obsession. Which that's good. Gar Will be till the do. day I die. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I mean, I think what, what a lot of people at least hear about, or some of us know people that uh, go sober and some of them get really into fitness and exercise or food yeah uh, <laughs> which is the opposite yes. the first yeah. uh the first probably three months of my sobriety i was doing uh, nine shots of espresso a day oh my god uh, we, we know uh wow. one guy who does he i think he does double that a day over ice um you he, no oh. i do i do a lot but no, this dude does just straight up espresso on ice. And when and when he, he pisses, does just a bean come out? <laughs> and like he he and he does the hardcore workouts, and he does uh, lots of candy. 
Yeah. I'm like, oh, candy's yeah. a big one. Can- yeah. Is that yeah. right? Sugar. Oh, sugar rushes. Yeah. I'm yeah. just coming off a one year Ben and Jerry's bender. Oh, what was one your flavor? Uh, Americone Dream. What's in that? It's so perfect. <laughs> What's in that? Let's it's, talk about it. <laughs> it's vanilla ice cream, but like really, really good vanilla they ice have cream. The best, yeah. And then fudge covered uh, uh, chunks of waffle cone. Fuck yeah. And then uh, caramel swirled in. And every <sighs> once in a while, good. you'll hit a a caramel deposit that it seems like the Ben and Jerry worker had nodded off at the caramel lever. You know, and it's just like, oh my god, I can't go to bed now. I got to see where this fucking thing ends. It's a real danger for me. Yeah. Is ice cream really yes. dangerous? I got some over the holidays for you because we don't normally have it. And like, what do you that, like? I'm pretty. I'm pretty much a purist. Pretty simple with. I like vanilla ice cream with chocolate chip, but not mint chocolate chip. Just regular chocolate I hate chip. It. Mint flavored and, anything, but, yucky. But like one of those, a, a, where you a, can a, taste like vanilla bean, really you good taste vanilla bean, and then like the offset with like that crunchy chocolate. It's all piece. about the texture, man. And then I also, uh, I love that there's multiple versions of this, but all the different cookies and cream ones. Oh, like, the best. I can like, I can get a pint of that and, and within minutes being like, oh, I can see the bottom of the pint <laughs> right now. Yep. Like, Cause I get zoned out. I'm just like, hum, hum. I'm like, I feel sick to my stomach mm-hmm. and not stop. <laughs> and then the ice cream farts. Yeah. Like yeah. two hours later. Those, uh, those are a whole lever, a level of a sulfur that like the other, it's, they're hot. Wow. They come out almost See, hot. I don't yeah. get those, but my stomach will start hurting and I'll get gas under my ribs. Yeah. And I found out I'm lactose intolerant. And you know what's and that's bullshit, fucking by the way? You don't get Gas? You don't no, get it's, farty? It, I get gas, but it goes under my ribs and it hurts. That's the fucking pain. worst. I'll be in pain. I feel like the the bullshit, though, is because I tried it for a while when I was buying it more, is like, so, like you know, soy ice cream. Fuck soy. Like, this Fuck shit that garbage, shit, man. man. What's the point? Yeah. All, all the, the knockoff, like, this isn't real ice cream, is dog shit. Yeah. yeah. You got to have now, real ice cream. How do you feel about frozen yogurt, guys? <laughs> I mean, I'll fucking eat it, <laughs> uh, you know. But I, I always feel like I wish I had ice cream right now. Yes. You know? See, I kind of like it because I like the shittiness of it. I like you shitty. You know what I like? McDonald's Sundays. They're yeah. fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> Their hot fudge Sundays are fucking great. They taste like They're nothing like ice cream. McFlurries. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Remember, we know a guy who is so such a pig <laughs> that he would get two different McFlurries <laughs> because he doesn't want to mix the tastes up. So. And who hurt him? His mom or his daddy? <laughs> He was hurt by his daddy, I think. Yeah. yeah. And he had a really weird relationship with his mommy. Yeah. Uh, and he I'm got, finding out a lot of people did. Yeah. Shit. And he Doing got, the podcast. Yeah. Tell me. Real fucking depressed when 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 I we haven't s- spoken to him in a long time, but man, when he went down this this kind of depression cycle, he went down the food. Mm-hmm. And, oh uh, my god, I remember he this. He was drinking a fucking two liter, like wow. sitting with down. sugar. Uh, a, a, a Pepsi Max, which uh, is like their their amped up Pepsi. Pepsi and Max. Then he was doing. Um, he would get a six pack of Cinnabons. What? And, yes. How was he not a diabetic? He became a diabetic. Yeah. Through it. Well, he, he reached would, his goal. He would eat. <laughs> so of the six, he would eat one, two, three, four, and the inside of five, and then so he would have one and a half left to tell himself that he that has I, control. That yeah, I didn't. Wow. I didn't eat the whole thing. Yeah. It was fucking nuts, man. Wow, and is he still in it? No, he's he's out of it now. It Good was a for while him, ago, man. But he was. I've been in that vortex. It was, it was it's, bad. It's yeah. yeah. It was bad. Your brain is saying one thing, and your body is just going "fuck off, <laughs> fuck yeah. off." To see someone in that and not know what's going on is like really alarming. Because yeah. I think all of us were like, "What the fuck are you doing right yeah. now?" You know, that's uh, bad. That's real deep, though. What's the longest time you've ever spent looking for? Uh, a porn clip <laughs> not a specific one but you know that when you're looking at porn and you're not just like <laughs> all right i'm just gonna look at this and i'm gonna jerk off and get the anxiety out or whatever but you're like the hunt for the clip the is perfect the jam thing you're getting you're getting high off the, this, just the anticipation of this is gonna get real dark <laughs> real quick yeah for me <laughs> not long yeah long time five six hours probably yeah, for me i've done that five or six hours you yeah. guys oh yeah i've gone without eating i lost weight one time i went on such a porn porn binge it was shortly yeah, after dude, i got out of my marriage and i didn't is, want to feel this yeah. is so embarrassing but i remember when i lived alone it was like a year after i moved out here and i would go down those like long 
rabbit hole porn searches. And I remember one time I got a phone call from one of my aunts and I stayed on the phone with her as I looked through clips. <laughs> of course you did. But not masturbating. Right, just, just like, like perusing. realizing that I was so in the zone, mm-hmm. like zoned out, Yeah. that I was like, yeah, no, yeah, we, it would be good to see you. And then I would keep clicking through stuff and seeing and they're like, no, no. Did you have and, the decency to switch to incest porn though? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, I wanted, to, I wanted to stay true to what I was into yes. at the time, but it was fucking. And how half-assed are those answers when you're. Oh, that's the thing is what, just what like took a me robot. out of it that was that I could tell her voice, like the way she was answering me was like, what are you doing? Right. Like what, you know what I mean? She was like, uh-huh, like, okay. Like. She could tell that I you wasn't can tell. paying attention. Yeah, you can tell when somebody's yeah. not paying attention. That's, and that's why you're I was not like, paying attention. I was like, now no. I know those times on the road when I call you and you're like, uh-huh, yeah. No. You're doing that's... your porn searches. No, that's usually sports. <laughs> what are your sports? I'm, I'm just a big football fan. Yeah, I like you used football. to play, right? No, no. I mean, I played high school football. But, oh, okay. But I mean, I like college football. And I'll watch highlights and, and I'll be like, oh, that's crazy. And But I don't know. I get, I get sucked into that. But not, not I don't get like zoned out by that really i get zoned out by tv i like Mm -hmm. i like my tv mom likes her shows i go down rabbit holes of shows like binging i think there's there's like two categories there's the one that that release the drugs in your brain yeah and then there's the ones that are just kind of interesting to you like i that's what i try i like um like vintage hockey fights i like those but i don't like get high right them right right but like porn I will just feel like dopamine then is just like, yes, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your reptilian brain. We don't yeah, you're need right. food. That's true. Food's yeah. the best. I got to slow it down because I'm preggers right now. I've slow already, it down? Well, no, because I've already gained too much weight for the pregnancy. Like, I got I got a talking to from the doctor already. So, Re- wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I was eating, I was doing Domino's pizza for like the first trimester because you're, so, you're nauseous, so you don't really want to eat. So when you do want to eat, it's going to be crap just because like your body wants carbs. The baby wants carbs. So I was like waffles, pizza, <laughs> cheeseburgers at midnight. And then, yeah, I just it's already packed on. So yeah, I have he, to like, I've got to rein it in. He gave kind of a shameful speech. He was like, so. We're not going to do that again, are we? We're not going to do that, are we? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, yeah. I better go eat some vegetables. And <laughs> as her husband, what do you do on the sidelines if you see her starting to go over the edge? Because there's a fine line there. It's <laughs> like you don't want to be controlling or insulting or oh, feel I, like you're objectifying her. I say nothing. Nothing. Whatever you want is fine. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, I think that's... I think most, I mean, unless I saw her something doing like destructively eating, I was, yeah, I'm just like, whatever you want, it's totally cool with me. Yeah. Well, I think you, I mean, I'm, I rein it in too when I have No, you're not out of control. That's what yeah. I'm saying. But like, yeah, I mean, when, I, I don't know, anytime I've been around any pregnant woman who's like, I got to eat, I'm just like, all right. Fuck yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. That's the, that's the, the go flag. That's the green yeah. flag or whatever they There's do. There's no real argument against that. But I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> My the last hilarious pregnancy, thing, yeah. I, I gained way too much because I was eating Carl's Jr. twice a week. The best was his, <laughs> his, um, Wasn't he, allowed to do his that. sheet for like how you should eat. Oh my was God. Was clearly how he eats because he was like a very like thin, you know, you could tell like type A, like in control guy. Yeah. And it was like, have four almonds have this thing literally four quinoa. asparagus yeah fuck two yeah. medium sized i read it i was like this oh is his God. diet this is what he eats yes. this dude eats this yeah. and he's just like this is what you should eat and obviously. then once a week he sees a dominatrix to let go of all the ah, control it totally. seemed like it yes that those he, are the guys that go to the dominatrix yeah, yeah. well yeah. And, oh and he goes at the bottom of the sheet it's like and once a week you can splurge and have two ounces of ice cream. Yes. What yeah. is two ounces? The two licks. I do. Yeah. I look at somebody like that, and I, they might as well be from another planet. Yeah. <laughs> like I used to look at people that would only no. finish half a beer, and I would just think, Hi, yeah. "What is that like?" Yeah. It's yeah. like, how do you do? What that? is your native language, bro? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, for God's sake. I think my arm has been pulled out of the socket. No. <laughs> Why did you pick on someone one fourth your size? So this guy would be the kind of guy that is from another planet, and I think here he actually shifts to another language. Approximately, he says he's a Jedi Knight now. For those who didn't follow it, I'll do it in slow motion now. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I can't take him. Anymore. I can't take it either. But that dude really thinks he's teaching you. <laughs> 
to Tom, understand. How much money for you to learn Chewbacca language? <laughs> and I mean, learn it fluently. Like I know you're doing Rosetta Stone for Italian. You're doing Rosetta Stone for Wookie. It it would seriously be a lot more than I got from Netflix <laughs> to do a special. A lot more. And you you have to test every week, and you have to be fluent. It's, it's several million dollars. <laughs> A why? Lot. Why Italian? Why? Yeah. Um, well, I speak Spanish, and um, you know, I had an interest in learning French. And what I what I discovered was Italian is so much easier for me it's because it's close to Spanish. Yeah, there's a yeah. like all the pronunciations are pretty similar. Yeah. Um, and so far, like I'm flying through. It. That's <laughs> Whereas awesome. when I did the French one, I was like, "Fuck!" I kept <laughs> like I just kept hitting walls, and like so I'm doing it. Because I want to do something to stimulate that part of my brain, but I don't want to too big of a challenge. So, and That's with Italian, the only thing that sucks is I feel like there's more utility in French. There's definitely more places you can use it. Definitely more pussy. It, way more well, puss. Well, that's priority like, number one, Paul. Duh. Yeah, I mean, I have like, what are we going to do? Another couple of years? So I know I'm going to have some fun <laughs> with a second soon. kid. Um, Doesn't matter. But yeah, I'm I'm still I'm doing the Italian just at because. the very least the um, au pair. Yeah, you know, <laughs> if you if you don't have enough frequent flyer miles to go to Paris, yeah, just get a French flyer au pair. Here. Do you work on? Do you ever do, fuck with other languages? Do you ever like? Uh, we taped when I was doing dinner in a movie. We taped ten days in Italy, and so I did like a crash course, mm-hmm. and so I learned, you know, just uh, una bottiglia de acqua minerale per favore. There you go. You know, wow. yeah. Pull. Native little speaker? things like that. that yeah, good. it's like five, like five sentences. But the, people so appreciate it when an American takes the time to learn their language because most sure. Americans just come in there with a sense of entitlement and are yeah. just dicks. Yeah, and so it's like, oh, okay, they recognize that we are a fucking country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just learn with like people learn a couple of basics. I think anywhere you go, it's yeah. like just learn how to say like, excuse me, thank you, mm-hmm. please. Mm. For even for like a basic trip, it's like it goes a long way. Yeah. Or like, I'm, I'll never forget being in Paris and um, having lunch in a nice restaurant with some other students. We were we were actually in Madrid, but we went over to Paris for like a couple of days. We're sitting in this restaurant, and the server comes up, and one of the girls who's American turns to him. She goes, "English, right?" <laughs> and I was like, mm. and, you, "And then everybody at the table was like, head down." And the guy was like, yes, I do. I do speak English. But he even saw from our looks how embarrassed we were. I was like, why don't you just say, like, can't you learn to say, you know, excuse me, do you speak English? Or like, I don't, I don't speak French, right. you know. And see, but no, she had to go, English, right? <laughs> um, he was like, yeah. Like, um, and also, like, I've dealt with your type a yeah, lot. Assholes. So, oh, yeah, assholes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I go to Hungary, I'm not very good at Hungarian unless I'm there for like a month. And then yeah. I'll kind of maybe pick up a little, whatever. Uh, but but um, they're so rude over there that the Hungarians. Oh my god, that's why I barely try because like I remember last time I went there like in '99 or something or know, 2004 or whatever. I was like uh, trying to order and he kept correcting my pronunciation and grammar, but like in a cocksucker yeah. way. I find these kerek at I find these. He would try to. Wow. And I was like, bro, I'm trying. Like, you know yeah. what I'm fucking saying, right, cunt, right, cunt right. liquor. Like, you know. Sounds like you're so upset about it. I'm so upset. Yeah. Did you call him Dracula? <laughs> it wasn't Dracula, <laughs> so Hungarian? Rude. Not R- Romanian, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, but neighbor, same thing. Same yeah. shit, different toilet. Yeah. The cousins. Um, I got an email here. Um, when men poop, do they hold their hairy dick and balls in their hand? Or do they push their soggy dick down into the toilet in case some pee comes out? What if the dick is so long it touches the water? I learned this from my husband. He goes all in. Love you, Mommy, Tina. Thank you, Gene, for choosing my husband in the audience Friday to say his body is dog shit. Oh. So this must have been at your show. I remember him. I remember them. Delightful couple. Very enthusiastic. She's asking if we hold our dick and balls in our hands when we shit? No, Mm. we push it down, obviously. Uh, Yeah. What do you mean? I didn't know this. You push it down. You push it down in between your legs? So like here's the seat rim. You push it against there. Push it against there. If you pee, you pee down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. never knew that. Otherwise, where'd you think it would go? You get pee on the toilet seat. <laughs> yeah, you think it would hang out the outside of the toilet? <laughs> maybe, or just maybe just dangled wherever it wanted. I, I suppose. Didn't, I didn't but think it either has to be in the bowl or outside the bowl. But I didn't. But okay, but here's my thing: if you push it in the bowl, what if it rubs against the inner rim it and does. touches poo and pee? No, no, there's no poo up there in the front. 
on our toilet there is in the front well someone takes explosive dumps in that toilet yeah, but it does t- it you splatter do, you everywhere. do touch the porcelain it's kind of gross when you're in public that's what i was gonna restroom ask sometimes you. you're like I'll, like i'll lay a tissue down just for my own mm. peace of mind because like you're touching the porcelain yeah right? uh. but, but i mean yeah it's just how it is it's gross but then your peener gets other people's pee and stuff on it probably Mine doesn't hang low enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I I like that she was like, what if it touches the water? It's like, it, do you know what kind of hang you're talking about right now? That water, it's, it's not like right there. Yes. <laughs> it's, I would gladly be able to have that problem. Yeah. yeah. Wait, but I heard, um, you know, male comics are always joking about when they get older, their balls sag and they can yeah. touch the water. Does that happen? I've looked, Some guys. Yeah. And you sit on enough toilets where there's also weird... Um, mechanisms for toilets. Sometimes you'll sit on a toilet, you hit flush, and it has like water comes up and then mm-hmm. goes down. So you'll you'll jump because the water will raise <sighs> up to your balls. But like for the most part, your balls are unless you're a ball hog, in which <laughs> case you know uh, then then you get your your balls. Yeah, sniff those balls. <laughs> sniff them. Okay, now let me put it right up against your eye. Okay. Oh my so. God. <laughs> when did porn get so uh, aggressive? Well, I think about 15 years ago. Because <laughs> yeah. it didn't used to be no. that way. And I don't want to sound like an old person, but uh, no. I remember porn when somebody wasn't getting punched. I, I we, agree. We've had the discussion that when we are introduced to it, we're basically too young, your kid, but we were watching pretty much 80s porn. Mm-hmm. Where the thrill was just that you're having sex with some. Like that was. Yeah. That was you were seeing a vagina. Yeah. And then in the scene, they were like. This is so great that I get to have sex with you. Like that was, yeah, that was the interaction. That you I'm so say. glad I misdelivered a pizza. Yeah, yeah. And then you know it was big hair, and it was just naked people doing it. Yeah. And then it, I think it's because I don't know. There was maybe the as the exposure of it grew, people became more desensitized. I think so. That's then it, it heightened. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But then again, I, okay. What wh- what are the most popular searches for porn? It's milf porn is yeah. one of the like, top category. It's not the um, That's the true. ball licking, the fist, f- double fist, anal fucking. It's not it's the- It's not the most popular, for sure. No, not, no, everyone is kind of in the middle of what their tastes are. I think it's just marketing and like, whoa, I'm going to- cl- It's like clickbait, right? Yeah. Five dicks and one butthole, wow. I got to see how that works yeah. out. <laughs> That's going to break bad. How is this going to Or finish? break open. Right, right. I can't, um, cause I, I don't know. I'm trying to pull up the- uh, it says that there's the most popular... Yeah, what are the big searches right now? P- po- most popular porn searches. Gay. I read the, I heard some podcasts where straight guys are searching for gay stuff, meaning there's a lot more gay men out there than are, are copping to, basically. They're saying they're gay. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, MILF is big. It looks like uh, hentai. That's the uh, Sh- Japanese. Yeah. Crap. Uh, cuck. Cuck holding. Mm. Was big lesbian. Wow, that whole crazy term. Uh, gay. Big. These are the biggest searches of 2017 according to porn. It's amazing oh, how quickly oh. things change. Uh, so that sounds pretty basic, though. Big dick. Big dick. That, that lesbians. Yeah, it's like same shit, different toilet, man. Yeah. Um, and the most viewed categories for women, uh, like in the U.S., the biggest term for uh, search term for women was lesbian. As same as South America. In Africa, you'll never believe it, the biggest search term was ebony. Um, Russia, it's anal. Wow. Um, yeah. And it looks like, yeah, those are kind of it. Yeah. And then mature See? and teen. Teen is a popular term as well. Oh, yeah. I've heard that's a yeah. big one. Yeah. So, but they seem, you're right. It's not like airtight, six <laughs> dicks in her. Yeah. It's not like that. It's not, that's the curiosity click, I yeah. think. I, I mean,. What about tra- transsexual? I thought that was very popular. I'm sure it wasn't the top 10 list, but I'm sure it's a very popular term. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of that. Chicks with dicks. Yep. Um, what is, uh, let's see here. Why do infinity wipers happen? Mm-hmm. I know oh. exactly what you're talking about. How can I combat them? 90% of the time, I'm a solid one, two wiper. Occasionally, I get stuck wiping for at least <laughs> 10 minutes. Infinity wipes. Nuts. <laughs> really destroys a good roll of toilet paper. Any help is appreciated. <laughs> Keep it non-binary. Zach. Yeah, I, I, if I may, because I'm kind of the the queen of infinity wipes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. This is why I invented shit to shower. Yeah. To for me, the only way to stop the wiping is to take a shower, and I don't know what why that is. But the minute you take soap and water to your hiney, 
you're going to stop the wipes. Oh, wow. Try it out. Do you have that ever? Infinity (laughs) wipes? I christened the house I live in now. It was empty. (laughs) I had just taken ownership of it, and I had to take a shit. So I go in there. I take my first shit in the house, and it's one of those shits where you're like, there's not enough toilet paper in the world. So I get in the shower, and there's not even a shower curtain. (laughs) And oh, there's like right. no soap. It's like day one. Yeah, it was. And I just remember thinking, really, this is my first memory. <laughs> this is this is how I christen. This is the worst bottle of champagne yeah. to crack against a shit that, ever. That best, that first shit in the house, you, you actually remember. You really yeah. do. Uh, I think shaving your asshole <laughs> and wiping from front to back has been the biggest key for me. Oh, which oh. minimizes the, yeah. the multiple wipes. My the dad has wipes. multiple theories on it. It's wipe direction. Like White Paul direction. said, mm-hmm. diet. Diet's and sometimes right. he goes, you got to let things settle. So what he, because I've asked him, he goes, what you need to do, buddy, is you stand up. Kind of things will realign inside of you. Because sometimes it's just the way that you're sitting and the way your insides kind of goes. Stand up, kind of let things go back together, and then sit back down. I've tried it. It actually has worked before. Yeah? Yeah. Like, like he, I mean, he says it like really like a researcher would yeah. say, you know, but he, yeah, he insists on it. And I've, 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 I've thought about it. I think it does make sense. So next time you have an infinity wiper, <laughs> just try standing up for a second, you know, kind of have everything go Re- back Recalibrate, together. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. will. But it's yeah. too late at that point. It is too late. I mean, late. that's like after you get in a car accident, drive better. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. Because here's the thing, there's already brown all over you you're already in the, it's already messy the brown's not all over you you just have a a hole that it, it, it's like leaking basically so <sighs> diet i think is the biggest thing diet diet's everything. a big deal that one of life's really most <laughs> sublime pl- pleasures is the shit where you wipe and you go i didn't even need toilet paper yes! that's a, it's so true it's the best the ghost shit yeah <laughs> the best that is the best yeah. it's like you want like, something and you double check that there's something in the bowl you're like <laughs> yeah did i miss is there a piece stuck to my leg because this is too good to be true phantom shit coming yeah. out <laughs> um we've been talking about my dad <laughs> says things incorrect like mispronounces so many words <laughs> um so we've been getting a lot of emails about it along the lines of our parents saying things wrong when i was a child we had a cat and for the longest time i thought that his name was charlie it wasn't until I was laying in bed one night when I was 23 that I realized the cat's name was Charlie and that his name was being said with an extremely thick Boston accent. Loved, Charlie. Just grateful. Um, to celebrate uh, watching it, I licked some scrum. You run like a lady. Mike from Albany. I don't know what that part means. Like some scrum. Do you say that on the on the special? No, no. But he says you run like a lady. I don't know what that means. Um, but yeah, well, my dad, is, but see, like, that's an accent that you're hearing. Right. Yeah, my dad. It's more the foggy brain, old guy. But he's been doing it for like, like we were talking about when he was here for the holidays. Uh, like I don't know, Casino was on, and my dad was like, "That's a uh, Joe Pesky, right?" Joe Pesky. And yeah. we're like, "Yeah, but haven't you heard his name like ten thousand times? Right. Yeah. Like, why would you call him Pesky?" And he says like all types of words, like a few degrees. Yes, my wrong. dad. My dad used to do that too. Uh, who would like a Heineken's? Yeah. Oh, pluralizing. Oh, the pluralizing. That's a pluralizing. One. That's the go-to. And at one mm. time, my dad uh, said, um, uh, uh, "I was listening to uh, Simon and Garfinkel." No. And I went, "No, Dad, it's it's Garfunkel." He goes, "Oh yeah, Garfinkel. That's the cat." Uh, Garfield. Garfield. Yeah. Now is he a native I English think speaker? Yeah, you know what? It, we oh. were discussing all our theories on it. Like, could it be brain damage? I think it's for like my dad. It is actually a lack of paying attention. In other words, it's kind of like being half into the conversation. We were watching. He goes, "You know, you don't hear a lot about in the news these days is that Gerald Kushner." And I go, "Jared." And he's like, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So in other words, it's like you know what I'm saying. Right. I'm like, but dude, you've heard his name and you've read it in newspapers like a million times. So your dad's half listening? I think because so he's, he's half looking listener. at porn clips. He might be listening. Yeah, he might be looking at porn. He might be watching ball hogs instead of actually <laughs> talking to me. But everything he says is kind of like, you, you know what I'm trying to say. Yes. So I'm like, I think you're just kind of half checked out of everything. Yeah. So then you're half saying things wrong. You know what I think that starts to happen? And I don't want to scare you guys. Well, but children. Children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Sleep deprivation. I oh, know absolutely. My yeah. best friend, once he had four kids, like there was a part of his brain 
that never came back. Absolutely. Especially as the mom. There's a thing called mom brain, and it starts, uh, for me, it started in the third trimester of my last pregnancy and for the first year. You remember that? I would just forget because you're so sleep deprived and you're just so mush. Your brain is mush. Part of it is aging, but I think that having the kid exacerbates this is your separation from pop culture. Oh, Mm -hmm. forget it. So you're so into this, you know, taking care of this being and all your home life that things kind of pass you by. That, yeah. It happens more when you have a kid, I think, where you're like, somebody will bring up, you're like, who's that? And they're like, who's the number one artist in the country right now? And you're like, <laughs> I don't know who that is. No, it just kind of passes you by. Last night, I was saying to Tommy, I'm like, I'm, I'm 41 years old. I think I'm finally the official age where I don't know shit about pop culture. Like, I yeah. I know about Cardi B, and I'm like fascinated by her. And that's it. it. Right. Right. Who? It's a singer. She's a singer. I, honestly, I've never heard of she's her. She's a rapper. She's a rapper, and she's got oh, she like got a big, couple big hits. Yeah, huge. Okay. She's she's very successful right now, and um, that's all I know. Maybe the voice. I know Blake Shelton was on there, but I'm officially that that turning point where you're, you're lame. Well, we made a. I mean, it wasn't on purpose, but such a shift. I feel like within the last four years or so, where things on television, if it's on TV. Doesn't mean anything. Oh, I don't. I don't it even doesn't. Know it. First of all, like my wind down of like I want to watch something involves Netflix, iTunes, like what's you mm-hmm. know renting things or watching a movie, um, maybe Amazon Prime. And like if there's a show like that on NBC Fox, I'm like there's zero percent chance unless like a friend's on it and they're like I'm on this show. Right. Even then, yeah, it's like well, I don't watch it, but that's good for you. Like <laughs> I know the name of the right. show, but I mean, yeah. So like those things. Just go past me now. Sports. That's that's the only thing I watch broadcast TV yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. It. What's yeah. your sport? What do you like? Hockey. Hockey. Yeah. But you're a Northeastern guy? or Chicago. Chicago guy. Yeah. Oh, that one makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's a great sports town. It is. Are you also a Bears fan and a Bulls fan? I was until, you know, after they won in 85, 86, uh, and they just took the team apart for money. Yeah. I, I was like, why am I frustrating the fuck out of myself getting behind a team with more care about winning than the fucking owners yeah. they're the only uh, f- professional sports team where it is the sole business of the owners so i understand that they treat it more of a business than as a hobby mm-hmm. like jerry jones where it's all about his ego and winning yeah yeah but the bears could use some more of that yeah i mean i, I feel like your fandom if you have like ownership issues like i was born in cincinnati and we left when I was a kid, but we left the year they went to the Super Bowl in '88 with Boomer. Yeah, yeah. and like I Icky. was, su- yeah, Icky Shuffle. Yeah, and I was hey, such you a got diehard. That yeah, I was such a diehard fan. Um, but then what I discovered is like, after time, kind of living in the, with the reality that they're like probably one of the worst ownership groups or teams in in, in the NFL. Yeah. It it makes your fandom like die. It's so, hard, man. It really tests like it. They're, Horror. They're a perennial Horror. dog. Yeah. Yeah. And you realize too that you're like, that's so, it's, it's a real thing that a team can suck for decades. Decades. The Saints in the 70s yeah. were, I don't think they ever had a season where they won more than five games. It was, they never made the playoffs. No, I know. They were dog shit. Awful. Awful. The and Ants. they had, and, and, yeah. and, uh, what's his name? Uh, Archie Manning was a fucking great quarterback. Yeah. There's bad. And then there you can, and then the flip side, you see like, like let's say like the Steelers ownership, you're like that's like a family that they love the team, the city. They want to win. They do things the right way, and it's like and they have six fucking rings. You know? Do you think it's they know when to give up control and not micromanage? I think so. I think I do think. I mean, it sounds kind of cliche sports be- speak, but it's like they develop a system and like a, here's the it's like a culture like in a company. Here's the way we do things here, and when you get people to really buy into like this is how we work here. And and you have integrity and you have good values for like how they probably treat employees all the way on down. I think that 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 becomes something that people really buy into. I mean, for all the shit people talk about the Patriots and all that, it's like, you know, I think they have a, a real culture going in that organization. Absolutely, the Blackhawks are probably the one of the greatest examples of that. The uh, uh, Bill Wirtz was the owner for years, and he was dis by the fans because he pinched pennies he, he he was a dick he treated Bobby Hall and all those other Stan Mikita treated those guys like shit money was the only thing that mattered to him and when he died his son Rocky Wirtz took over and and 
attendance was in a 30,000 or whatever uh, seat stadium. Um, there was maybe 12,000 people. Rocky Wirtz took over. He started uh, bringing back the Hall of Famers, honoring them. He got good GMs. They started drafting wisely. They got Kane. They got Taze. And it is one of the most uh, profitable sports franchises ever. And but when they changed their philosophy, though. Changed their philosophy. And when they won uh, uh, a Stanley Cup, all the employees got rings. That's cool. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, one of the things that people, I mean, people say, like, will say they know it, but they don't act on it is if you're a fan of anything, doesn't, I mean, it could be sports, it could be, if you go, I'm not going to support that thing anymore. That's really the only way you'll see change. In other words, right. like in Cincinnati, they'll still sell that fucking stadium out. No matter what they're doing, people will yeah. still buy tickets to the game. And so that lets the owners go like, well, yeah. you don't have to fucking do anything. We're like, making money. Yeah. Let's it's like, roll the dice. And we'll you want to hurt them? Like stop going to the games. Yeah. Stop buying tickets to games and you'll see something will change. Go in the parking lot and set off car bombs. Yeah. Whatever it takes. That's, I, I encourage Take it. Take hostages. <laughs> I... Uh, um, this is a question. We get questions about all types of things, but here's a question about little people. I was in the bathroom cutting my solid brown in half with my powerful <laughs> urine stream. <laughs> I had a thought. You know how when adults refer to their childhood, they start off by saying, when I was little. Yeah. Do adult little people refer to their childhood by saying this also? Do they say, when I was a little smaller? I can't get this off my mind. I need some <laughs> answers here. That is kind of an interesting it language yeah. language question because you do say, when I was little. And if you're a little person, you might be like, when I was really little? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's kind they of probably silly. say when I was young or when yeah. I was younger. younger. Uh, I, I wonder if younger. they ever, I mean, if the length, yeah, because all day they're like, refer to themselves as little. So. That's so true. Maybe when I was tiny. Yeah. When I was half the Smaller. size of half of you. Uh, my girlfriend can't tell the difference between left and right. She has to hold her hands in front of her and make an L with each hand. <laughs> The correct orientation of the left letter means left. This is my life. I have accepted her handicap All and will right. support her through life, but we want to have a child. Will she pass on her retardation or is there still hope for our little genes? We have a dog and he is real dumb. Not sure yet if that's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> love Brad. I love this. That's email. one of the funniest emails I've ever, <laughs> yeah. I've ever read. So, so she literally, he goes, make a left, and she has to she go. Goes, which way is the this L. way? Yeah. And the dog is dumb, and he's not sure if that's her fault. Um, I tell you yeah. this much: she's got to be hot. Yeah, she's yeah. a smoke show for sure. Hey, yeah. Brad, send photos next week because we're pretty sure she's lightning, man. Huh. Oh my God. What do you think? It could be a you know a brain thing, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it probably is some form of dyslexia or some kind of direction. Some people have terrible, terrible. I, I mean, I've never heard left, right, no. but I know north, south. A lot of people are yes. fucked up by that. I don't know that all the time. I have to do the never eat soggy weedies. You know what I find out is that when you live in a certain neighborhood, especially in Los Angeles, you get your orientation. But when you leave that neighborhood and you go to another just neighborhood in LA, for me, I. I lose the sense of all direction. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but it, yeah, like it's like I'm standing in uh, Hollywood. I'll know north, south, east, west. But if I go to Burbank, I'll start be like, yeah, it's south of this, and they're like, that's north. I'm like, no, that's not north. And yeah. then yeah, it just throws me off. I don't know why. I leave neighborhoods and I I can't orientate myself. The the only way that I I've always had kind of an obsessive need to know what direction I'm facing, and it's one of the reasons I don't like flying into cities is because then I. I don't have a bearing to start with. Like right now, I know I'm facing northeast, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, it's just like this. In, in Wait, you in, know you're facing northeast yeah. right now? I didn't now? know right. that. I, would, I wouldn't right. know wow. that. Yeah, um, hold know on. That. Yeah, you are. You are facing northeast. It's just this weird, I think it was a fear of being lost oh, maybe yeah. you, when I was a little person. I mean, did you know that just like you, you just know... How'd you, you, how'd you, you do the math? In? Tell us how you calculate no, it's that. No, it's just a, a sense of, of uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I don't... I don't have to think about it because I'm always thinking of things as a grid, kind of. Wow. But Whoa. when I get into curvy shit, then I, I lose. Like when you get into subdivisions where it's all curves. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, super orgasm asms, do you know what that is? Uh, our, blue, our producer just threw this into our folder. I have no idea what no. this is. I don't know. The most that I've had, I think, 
probably be upwards of 60 throughout an evening. It's great, especially the ones that keep on going forever. And then there comes a time after a long time that I just say, now we have got to stop because, uh, I mean, you can't go on for hours. I feel like Europeans have so much more fun than us. I yeah. feel like that no one American will be in this uh, video clip. Thank you. Right. had a super orgasm. It's actually last year. I was really confused. And to me, it felt like a contraction, but nice. Hmm. Do you want to go to this seminar? It looks like they're in like a little group circle. Uh, I don't, I'm not a fond of group orgasm therapies or, yeah, no. It's a super orgasm, though. I know. <clears throat> yeah. I don't, I don't, I think one is fine. Like, I'm not, I'm not chasing the dragon here. You know what I 60 mean? 60 in an evening? Like yeah, that lady? It, I think one is sufficient. I'm I not... would bet the next day they're depressed because yeah. you're, you're Too high, depleting right? all of that. That's like when you take ecstasy, uh, you're depressed the next yeah. day because all that, you're withdrawing all that dopamine or whatever the Yeah, I'm are. not, I'm not an extreme type of person. Yeah. I think I'm happy with what, like, anatomy, you know, yeah. provides. 52-year-old mother of two, Beverly, is super orgasmic and oh believes boy. practicing tantric sex is what leads to super orgasm. There you go. I'm a priestess of love and sacred sexuality. Do you think? It's very natural for me if I'm making love with a partner to have many, many orgasms where my whole body is flowing with sexual energy. Do you think she's as full of shit as the guys? Who, the who, cum hugs? The yeah. The cum hugs and the... Yeah. They're, they're, that is like a bouquet of cliches. Yeah. That, I, such bullshit. There are, the, you, the word sacred. Yeah. <laughs> um, the the uh, you know the Indian the music, music, the sitar, or whatever. Yeah. The yeah, awkward yeah. dancing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the, horrible. It's all horrible. Rob, you know the Rob. word Mother Earth is just around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? Um, it smells of patchouli in there. I don't think we. Ugh. What cum hugging is? No. What so, cum hugging. There's a. I'm trying to pull this up for you. There's a. Um, oh boy. <laughs> there's these two people who say that uh, you can come just by hugging and come, going to their seminar. <laughs> it's. It feels like some bullshit, though, right? It really does. Yeah. yeah. It really does. Have you ever spooged so hard that you hit your own face? Yeah. 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 I hung one on my glasses one time in college. <laughs> <laughs> I had to laugh. I was like, it made me laugh. It just made me laugh. Just, yeah, drench yourself. Um, I can't even imagine that, you guys. Yeah. The cleanup? The cleanup's got to be terrible for men. It's pretty bad. Yeah. And, and especially because if you that adolescent phase where mm -hmm. it's like nonstop, and ugh, it's just got to be disgusting for your mother who's cleaning up your clothes I was, and your. I was always yeah. Ugh. What's the what's the most inappropriate or gross thing you've ever cleaned <laughs> well, your jizz with? <laughs> oh man, that's a good question. Yeah, I'm I good know. at these I questions, mean, Paul. That's a really good question. I mean, it was definitely. In that in those terms, I think of like this is an emergency. Yes. So it's probably something that's not mine. You know, yes. so like it's probably like somebody like a parent's clothing or oh, something. Oh, like you nasty yeah, as yeah. hell! Like, in a, like when you go like, you think you're alone, and like you hear the door open, you're like, oh fuck! And I don't yes. know where I'm at, and then I just clean up. I think I can't think of like a Man. specific though. What about you? Hands down, it, it was sex with a girl in a car. She was a single mom, and and she presented it to me to clean myself off with <laughs> a baby sock. Uh, I, I go really she goes that's the only thing i have i have not even a lot of surface area yeah there. and i was like this is going to be lasered into my brain for the rest of my life yeah. these are the cum huggers by the way i was trying to show you hi i'm melanie and i'm scotty o with ecstatic hearts tantra and we just want to share that there are many ways to orgasm you don't actually have to be having sex you can orgasm just from hugging. So that's their nonsense. It's, it's, it's amazing how many people in the world exist that make us uncomfortable. Yeah. Try it out. 
Yeah, they're they're they're, they're so uncomfortable <laughs> because I yeah. I've seen that clip now like forty times and I'm still like, Oof, man. Well, because I I struggle in my head. I'm like, uh, oh, I'm uncomfortable, but is it because I'm like a prude? Am I being closed minded here? Am I? I think we both kind of like when people are like that. I get uncomfortable with. Their, it's almost like their level of sharing. Like I can make, I can come. I'm like, just fucking, don't need to know about yeah. it. You know, I'm not prude, but I'm just like, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't wanna, need to know. I don't want to know. I don't need to know how much you can come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all for freedom, freedom, yeah. and, and no shame. But it's 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 less the concept of it than it is the presentation of it. The presentation yeah, of it that, is always it. kind of precious and right. new agey and just, I don't know, there's a, there's almost kind of a smug theater crowd. Yeah. You know, like how theater crowds laugh at something that's not funny? Yeah. Like, at oh, all. Oh, we know. Yeah. <laughs> we got, yeah. we understand that the butler would never do that. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of got a little of that Hamilton. vibe. It does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, like I would never see Hamilton. I think I'm so, I'm the lamest in terms of that. You wouldn't stuff. see it. I heard it's so good. I though. know. I I just hate theater. I don't know. I feel yeah. like it's too it's too corny for me. I'd be I like, know. Oh, I don't like interested. opera. I don't like, I don't like opera. I, I hate musicals. <laughs> I, I hate too. musicals. I hate, I hate musicals. Hate. Yes. Even like what was that Fuck, um, movie that was such Les Misérables movie? Fuck, I can't oh, even sit like, through it. Get your life. I turned man. off La La Land when they started singing in the first scene. Oh, I fast forwarded through the songs. I just yeah. liked Ryan Gosling and what's her shit. <laughs> you fast forward. Yeah, I don't want to fucking hear I it. I started on a plane. I was like, oh, this movie's like <laughs> winning everything. And then I, it's like that first scene, uh -uh. the camera settles, and uh -uh. then she's like, where am I? And yeah. I was like, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to watch this. <laughs> Don't want to see it. But I've been doing that since I was a kid, like with Disney movies and yeah. shit. I used to listen to records and I would skip over the songs. Mm. And I like the story. Some 69 at 70 so, uh, <laughs> submissions to wrap things up. So we've cool. been doing this thing where when I, uh, just to give you context for it, my dad turned 70 uh, back in August. We had a big family get together. And my mom, who's Peruvian, doesn't get a lot of references. Uh, one of the dinners on the first night of the of the get together, I said, "Hey, Dad's turning seventy tomorrow. Do you think you guys are going to sixty nine tonight to celebrate it <laughs> like a child?" And she was like, "What?" And, and everybody laughed. And then we kept teasing her about it all weekend. Yeah. So we we told our listeners about it, and we asked them to ask their parents if they're going to sixty nine at seventy <laughs> and get it on camera. And they've been no. sending in videos. Yeah. Oh, it's fun. And you get a that wide is. range of reactions. Sometimes. The parent is uh, playful. Sometimes they're stunned. Sometimes they get really upset, which is my favorite. Um, but so I don't know what these these are. Our new ones that came in. But oh my god, do I love yeah, that! It's always the moms that are upset. Yeah, the moms are like, Why would you ask me something like that, Sharon? Like really, <laughs> really upset. My fa I mean, those are good. I also like when yeah. they're like, "You guys are this is so juvenile." Yeah, I like those. I like those. Too. Nine times out of ten, the dad's on board. Though. Yeah, dads, the dads are like, always like, "Sounds yeah. good to me, buddy." Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the mom's like uptight. I know Dad's 62. Oh. Wait, hold on. Let's put bets on it. Well, what do you he think? Her reaction. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Last yeah. night that he's 69. Okay. Are you guys gonna 69 one last Stop time? It. Oh my God! Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever? Oh. 69? Uh, and you're videotaping. Are you gonna 69 one last time? Like the last time he's 69. <laughs> Well, oh my God, <laughs> she's hammered. <laughs> hammered. It's hilarious. First question is, have you ever? Oh my God, wait, Joe, right now. Why are you encouraging this? <laughs> I love it. That was great. That's uh, from Mr. S. Sorry, I couldn't find the pause. Oh, because I was, I was gonna, gonna say to, we should take a look at the moms next yeah. time and then bet on how you think she's gonna react. I thought she was gonna react angrily. Yes, I did too. I was that, being that, angry. That glare was like, the fuck are you asking me? Yeah. But then she did kind of smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's had a few in her, yeah, though. You're right. Yeah, the definitely. alcohol helps. Hey, hold on, hold on. Pop. Well, since uh, no humor, I'm gonna go no humor on this lady. Yeah, I I could go with you on that. I think it might not work out. Yeah, I think she's. <laughs> I think that he spends most of the marriage sitting there with yes. that look on his face. Yeah. Yes. And her reaction with that look on her face. Yes. Yeah. And yes. so that reaction is going to be probably remind her that he doesn't fuck her anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, okay, this is from Crystal. So here we go. Michelle's going to be 50. Yeah. That was kind of, that's a milestone. Yeah. <laughs> I love you the setups. So <laughs> Michelle's 50. <laughs> Turned 70 yeah. a yeah. couple of years ago. Yeah. So because you turned <laughs> the night before, 
yeah. you would have been, if you turned 70, you would have been 69. Yeah. <laughs> so when Grandpa turned 70, did you... Did you guys 69 oh. <laughs> before he turned oh. 70 as a send off? Oh. <laughs> You're bad. I love it. She loved it. She loved it, yeah. Did you tell her? Did you tell her? <laughs> what did he say? He goes, Did you tell her? Did you tell her? Uh, now that was a surprise. Completely yeah. surprised. Yeah. yeah. That's it's the best when you can't, when you don't nail it because yes. you're like, oh, this one's not going to like yeah. it. No. And then sometimes you're like, she seems fun. And it's, yeah. The hell did you just ask me right yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> Well, those two were both fun. He was fun and she was fun. Yeah. yeah. So that was a win. Well, Ralph, I was wondering, though, when you <laughs> turned 69, <laughs> before you turned 70, the night before you turned 70, are you and Kim going to 69? Oh, no. It's just that on any significant event, we just do it. <laughs> Actually, we do it every month when we go to work. That's how we brush our teeth. Oh, really? You brush each other's teeth with your assholes? <laughs> All right. They're fun. That's that cool. That's cute. Yeah. We've got a couple more here. Good. So, do you think. Oh <laughs> I'm going to say no. Square, square. I love they're square, doing square. it in front of the kid. Look. <laughs> Here's James. He's 70. When he was 69. Stop. Like on the last day of his 69th birthday, Stop. do you think you guys would have 69? Oh, well, it's been gross. Well, probably at least twice. Twice? Yeah. Oh, Fun. Weirdest people. Oh, God. It's his girlfriend that's like, you're disgusting. Like, you're the weirdest. Did you hear her? Yes. God. Totally judging. But this lady was actually fun. Yeah. Well, probably at least twice. Twice? Yeah. You guys are the weirdest people. <laughs> oh, God. God. My, God. Uh, my uh, ex's mom used to love when we would swear because she was raised really Catholic and really... So your ex-mother-in-law. Ex-mother-in-law. Okay. And when my ex moved into my house, this is, you know, we our apartment I don't know, 25 years ago, a friend was helping us move along with the mom. And so my friend... My mother-in-law and I are carrying this futon down the stairs, and my friend doesn't know that she likes swearing. And so as the three of us are carrying this down the stairs, I turn to uh, my, my mother-in-law, and I go, I can't wait to blow some loads on this baby. <laughs> and my friend, and she starts laughing, and when she would laugh, she would... <laughs> and my friend just looked at me like, what the fuck <laughs> did you say? To your mother-in-law? To your mother-in-law. Hilarious. Yes. Hilarious. This is the last one. <laughs> so, on Dad's 70th birthday... She's going to be good. Yeah. The last night Y'all of him being 69... Hold on, hold on. The last night of him being 69... Are you guys going to 69? <laughs> uh, Why would you ask them this question? I don't think they do. I don't want to know. I got to get you to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Don't eat. I'm going to reach six feet under. It's going to be a little difficult. Oh my God. They're fine. I love that all of the moms were cool. Yeah. It's funny that the the daughters or the daughter in laws or whoever the sisters were the ones that had the problem with that. That was Matt G. Thank you for sending that in. Yeah. It's like that. Everybody's been a good time so far, right? It's so Um, funny. I was trying to find the one. There was one. Was this it? No. (laughs) Oh, his jeans are tight. I know. I wanted to find the really disapproving mom. Oh, from, I love those. Uh, oh, I, I don't remember which episode it was in, though. But there was one lady who got so, like, controlled anger. At, she's like, what are you doing right now? Why would you disrespect me with a question like that? It's so fucking fantastic. Oh, man. Why would you ask me that? Yeah. Why, That's would, you like that? why would you say that? It's really terrible you would talk to me like that. Um, okay. What else? So, uh, the mental illness. Happy hour. Happy hour. You've been doing that for a while. God, such a Six good years. show. Six yeah. years is a long, long run. So there's yeah. hundreds of episodes. I yeah, imagine. I don't know when it's going to get canceled. But, <laughs> uh. Can I tell you that your show is such a huge public service to people, mm-hmm. to humanity. And I advise everybody listening to this show to check out Paul's show if you don't already know about it. Because um, you explore every facet of human existence. And like, there's no other person doing it. There's, no, there's nowhere else uh, where people are being interviewed about 
being bipolar or being a Hasidic Jew and being molested as a child or whatever the scenario. And what I really love on your website, which is mentalpod.com, he has these surveys up that people take anonymously. And so you can see what people are really have had happen to them in their lives, you know, things that you wouldn't want to admit in public. And, Interesting. and you can read what, what Thing, people, things that turn them on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just, it's yeah. amazing. It's such a great show. Thank I want to check that I out. I appreciate it. Yeah. The pod. Go listen it's my, to it. one of my faves. It's in my rotation, right, Tommy? It, it certainly is. Try it out. Listen Try it out. To it. Um, all right. Um, thank you for coming over today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, it. Any so other funny. plugs besides the podcast? No, Anything I think to check that's out? it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Aw, thanks for coming. Yeah, it was super fun, yeah, man. Super fun. You have to come back. Appreciate Please, that. Do. Please come Love back. To. All right. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks again for listening and uh, have a good one, guys. Ice come home, drunk. 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 I already don't like it. We were farting together. Yeah. Disgraceful. Netflix. You must let your vagina breathe at night. Don't bear under this. Hey!